Hallelujah, praise the Lord. <laughs> I, I know that this is um, a part of the book of Hebrews that it's challenging. I remember talking with um, some of you and been in religion for a long time and um, lots of accusations and curses placed on you and you'll see this is gonna happen don't do this don't leave this and and every time you hear something that's um, um, putting some it is charging you with something it's telling you something it's requiring something it sounds like uh, legalistic sounds like a law you know I'm uh, uh, I, I totally understand that but I let me tell you why I am not afraid of the commandments of the Lord because they are life and I know that I know the law was fulfilled, completed. And nothing that I do or don't do will fulfill it more or less. He completed, Jesus completed that. And I know I'm pleasing the Father because of what Jesus did. So I have no fear. If you read through um, the book of John, especially, the, the Lord Jesus talks about the commandment he received from the Father, which is eternal life. See, in, in the relationship with the Father, that is the absolute, uh, unconditional, total love that he sees the whole process from the beginning to the end completed. In the relationship with Jesus, he says, if you keep my commandments, you love me. It sounds like a conditional love <laughs> because that's a discipleship love. That's how your soul gets trained to understand the agape. Because the soul just has the filler, you know, the kind of conditional. So you learn about commands. You learn about what Jesus is telling you. You follow him and you discover the freedom to completely receive the agape. But if you go and look at the love of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is a jealous love. <laughs> That's going to purge you. That's going to cleanse you. That's the love. The clips. <laughs> all, the, all the branches that shouldn't be there. That's the love of the Spirit. Because He wants to present you as a perfect bride. <laughs> He's working on that. <laughs> and He knows he'll, he'll succeed. So all of this is love. Absolute, it's perfect love that casted fear away. I trust my father. <laughs> I trust when he puts some boundaries and some limits here. That's not legalism. That's not the law. This is love. Because my soul probably, the way it was trained before or didn't understand before, would just go all over the place. And he lets me, then my soul would be you know, doing all kind of things <laughs> out of his control. Then I have to repent and come back anyhow. So no, I believe he wants to say, hey, no, no don't start in that. Now the relation, no, no, just just leave the relationship to me. No, that's not legalism. That's love. <laughs> okay, just wanted to settle that. Okay, and I know you hear me. 
So we talked about accountability. <laughs> That's not legalism. That's absolute love. <laughs> Think about for the ones that have kids. You, know, you love them so much that you don't let them touch the fire. You won't let them. And if they don't listen to you, you're not going to say, well, just burn your hand. It's okay. I'm not going to call the paramedics. Just burn your hand. I told you. No. <laughs> you, you pulled him from there. Maybe he needs a little guardrail. Maybe spanking too. <laughs> this is important. He doesn't know what's good for him at a certain age. You do, because you love him. <laughs> so we got to Hebrews 4. And again, we, we stay in this place. And I, I hear the fear of the Lord all over in your soul, in talking to you and speaking through my mouth. Okay, I see and I hear fear of the Lord. And that's okay. Because right here it says, uh, God has offered us, verse 1, the same promise of entering into his realm of resting in coughing the faith. Okay, um, this is a, the, the translation is passionate. Okay, so we must be extremely careful. And I think in James says we have to fear, but that's, that's what I hear, fear of the Lord. Okay, it's not the phobia of the law. It's not fear of punishment. It's a fear that comes from love. <laughs> it's the fear of the Lord that hates evil and wants the best for you. <laughs> That's fear. So be extremely careful to ensure that we all embrace the fullness of that promise and not fail to experience it. So that's the heart of our Father. He wants the fullness, to experience the fullness. Not just mentally agree with that, but experience it. For we have heard the good news of deliverance just as they did. Yet they didn't join their faith with the word. So this is a very important expression. I want you to focus on that. But didn't join their faith. Didn't mix their faith with the word. Instead, what they heard didn't affect them deeply, for they doubted. So they did mix faith, but not to the Word. I want you to see that. They did mix faith with something. <laughs> they doubted. For those of us who believe, faith activates the promise, and we experience the realm of confident rest. For He has said, I was grieved with them and made a solemn oath. They will never enter into the calming rest of my spirit. God's works have all been completed from the foundation of the world. For it says in the scriptures, and on the seventh day God rested from all his works. I I can, I can see, and you can see this, that lots of the Christians, even born-again Christians, they, um, they die in the wilderness. That's, that's kind of the extent of what they can um, walk with the Lord. And the good news is they are not in Egypt. Hallelujah. <laughs> lots of them had initial experiences. They crossed the Red Sea. They remember the moment they came to the Lord and they started. And lots of times it's a miracle, it's a healing, it's a deliverance, it's a revelation, it's a life change, it's quitting some addiction. And so they know they cross that Red Sea. They're not in Egypt. But lots of them don't don't go more than the wilderness. Um, so the wilderness people, they experience God. They experience His providence, right? The manna comes all the time. They experience miracles, you know, water coming from the rock. But they never understood entering 
rest, the fulfillment of that promise was Canaan. They didn't make it. I, I remember um, growing in growing up in religion and uh, just want to give an example one song that if you've been in traditional churches probably you sang it um, lots of times and I read the story behind it and I yeah maybe I got a little angry um, with the religious uh, with the preachers that didn't preach truth because the, the the song just as I am um, um, was written by one the author is actually they discovered rest it was a song that talked about I'm coming into rest I'm coming into Canaan but most of the preachers the churches traditional churches they use that as coming out of Egypt just as I am, the sinner, the disgusting worm, and just as I am, I'm coming to you, I'm coming out of. But that's not the intention of the Lord through the author. Okay? Listen to the first verse. Just as I am, without one plea, <laughs> but that thy blood was shed for me. This is finished work. <laughs> I don't have any anything to add to what you did. <laughs> it's what you did. This is entering rest. <laughs> you, you hear that. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bids me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. He's drawing us into rest. He is bringing us into the place of the promise, the fulfillment of the promise. I come, Lamb of God. Yeah, this this is not just uh, talking about where I was. This is talking about why you got me out of Egypt, Lord. Not for 40 years in the wilderness, but you got me out of there because of the promise. Because I want to show the whole world, the principalities and powers, the the wisdom of my Father, that through Jesus, He completed the work. That Jesus died, my dad. He was buried. I was buried with Him. And He was resurrected. That was my beginning of a new life. Hallelujah. This is the gospel. I believe that. So lots of the songs, even hymnals and um, hymns, a very special, precious, with the revelation of the finished work, revelation of rest, they were taken in and adapted, adjusted to talk about wilderness life. <laughs> See, we could mix faith with other things, with ideas, with desires, with longings, with doctrines, with the law. But unless it's mixed with the Word, it will not bring us out of the wilderness. Look today to the Word of God, who is God. It's not an opinion, it's not a declaration, it's not some pages in a book, it's Himself, it's God. The Word was with God and the Word was God. You mix faith with God Himself. 
It is as true as the Lord is true. <laughs> it's not just some words that you claim to be true. It's real. It's himself. What the word says, it's what the word is. What the word is, it's what the word does. And because he does, therefore he says, and is, and does, and says. <laughs> it's the circle of truth right there. Cleans your heart of all the mixtures. So faith can mix with the word and will do that work. Faith is powerful enough. You don't doesn't need the help. <laughs> faith is powerful enough when mixed the right way with the word to do it. <laughs> to manifest that. It's powerful enough. Thank you, Father. Right now, we cleanse our soul of all the wrong mixtures. We cleanse it and let the blood of Jesus, as the light shines, let the blood of Jesus cleanse our hearts from anything that's not real. Anything that's not truth, let our hearts be cleansed and enter the place of rest. Thank you, Father. You are super blessed. I know these words are so deep and so powerful and so alive. You're loved.